Hi, and welcome to this short concept bite about energy transfer. Now, previously we've discussed quenching reactions and we've discussed the fact that my excited state is lost um, during the course of a quenching reaction. But there are a couple of different categories of quenching reaction that are perhaps a little bit more interesting. We have electron transfer, which is covered in Marcus theory, and we have energy transfer, which I'm going to discuss here. So there are two different types of energy transfer, which I'm going to discuss. The first of which is FRET. So here I have just an example of Forster resonance energy transfer in action. Here I have a, a donor and an acceptor. So my donor is the thing which exists in the excited state and my acceptor exists in the ground state. And then I have an energy transfer between them, leaving my acceptor in a new excited state. So just as an example of where we would meet this, uh, for those of you that have an interest in kind of biochemistry, um, DNA backbones labelled with a donor and an acceptor um, are able to tell us whether that DNA is, is base paired, is bound together. Because if it's not, in my case on the right, I see my emission from my donor. And if it is, I see the sufficient energy transfer from my donor to my acceptor. And when I've got it all base paired together, I see emission from my acceptor. So this is a pretty typical example of where FRET is used in the wild. So what process is actually going on with Forster resonance energy transfer? Well, it's a dipole-dipole interaction between the excited state of the donor and the ground state of the acceptor. And I see an energy transfer uh, leading to a ground state donor and an excited state acceptor. So the kinetics of this process is governed by a very complicated equation. Um, but of course, one of the terms that's related in this complicated equation is that dipole orientation factor. Because it's a dipole-dipole interaction, it will depend how those dipoles are aligned. So that's this kappa squared term. Um, other things that are going to affect the rate of um, forced resonance energy transfer include things like the lifetime of the donor molecule, um, the spectral overlap, which we'll learn a little bit more about um, later in this video, and the separation of the donor and the acceptor. So you would expect it to be more efficient as the uh, separation is smaller. There are some other terms that you might not expect, such as the refractive index. Um, but the important thing here is to remember that it's, whilst it's useful to kind of have an idea of, of what these terms are and what these terms are doing, um, I will never ask you to actually use this equation. Now, Forster resonance energy trust transfer occurs over reasonably long distances, so somewhere between about 20 and 90 angstroms. So they don't need to be touched, and this doesn't need to occur by collision. Um, we can still see this energy transfer. If I look at um, the transfer efficiency and the lifetime, so the transfer efficiency here is this pink line um, going from high to low. Um, as the separation is very small, as they are on top of each other, my transfer efficiency is one, and then it drops and it reaches this point where my transfer efficiency is 0.5. And this is a distance we call the Forster distance, and it's given the symbol R0. I then will see it falling until we reach about twice this Forster distance when it's very, very small efficiency of the Forster resonance energy transfer. If I was to actually look at the lifetime of the donor, as the efficiency is 1, the lifetime is 0, and that lifetime will increase to its unquenched lifetime as we pass um, a little over two Forster radiuses. Now, this Forster radius is a very important concept, and we can uh, have an equation which relates our efficiency of energy transfer to this Forster distance and the actual separation of my molecule. I can also relate the efficiency to the lifetime. And here my tau dA is my lifetime when I have my donor and acceptor systems together. And my tau d is my unquenched system. So on the previous slide, I spoke about spectral overlap. But what actually is that? Well, it does exactly what it says on the tin, really. I have my emission of my donor here on the 
um, the left in the pink line and I have my absorption of my acceptor and the greater the overlap here the more efficient the, the energy transfer. Now, I've shown this overlap here with uh, nanometers um, for my integral because we normally plot graphs in nanometers but really it should be over linear energy space so wave numbers but either way it is still just the physical overlap in the absorption and the emission spectra of my donor and acceptor the greater that overlap the greater the efficiency of, of the energy transfer that i see now i have a second mechanism of energy transfer and that is dexter energy transfer and what we have in dexter energy transfer is we have a concerted exchange of electrons we have one electron moving from the excited state of the donor to the excited state of the acceptor and at the same time I have an electron moving from the ground state of the acceptor to the ground state of the donor. This then leaves me with the same product I had before, a ground state donor and an excited state acceptor but it's done it by a very very different mechanism and because this mechanism um, actually involves physically moving electrons around it occurs a much lower distance um, to what we would see with Forster. Typically, I'll only see this at distances below 20 angstroms. So again, I'm giving you an equation which I don't particularly expect you to use, but the rate of Dexter energy transfer is given um, to us again by a variety of terms. But again, we see this term J, the spectral overlap between the donor and the acceptor coming up. But here I see my distance instead of being one over R to the six, I see my distance here as an exponential term. So my separation here is in this exponential term. Um, this describes two mechanisms of energy transfer, which are really important because it is quenching at a distance, which is something that we perhaps haven't considered before. I hope it's been useful. Um, I look forward to seeing you in other videos.